So I'm starting a new project. It's a binaural audio microphone. I took some earbuds, as you can see right here, and I completely took out the uh, internal speaker driver that would normally go into your ear so you can hear sounds and instead I chopped off the back of it and put an electric microphone. Now this is kind of a hard word to say. Uh, not electric, but electret. You can see the spelling right there. Electret. <laughs> so uh, there's a difference. Uh, these kind of microphones require phantom voltage. Um, I don't know what these ones in particular require. These came from an old project. I built a binaural audio microphone a long time ago. And this is like the circuit. This leftover, it's all crusty, old. And it was would not was not a very good design when I first built it. So I'm kind of redoing this from scratch. Uh, the, the microphones themselves I had installed on a dummy head. Uh, it was a wig head. And so I, I figured uh, I'd rather use my head as a dummy head and instead put these earphones in my ear and uh, use my own ears, my, my, uh, outside of my ear as the resonator uh, to pick up sounds. And by doing this we'll get accurate binaural recordings and then when I go to play them back or anybody else does through headphones they should replicate the same exact sounds that the human ear can hear. So uh, this is what we got going on so far. I mean it's very simple. I just simply um, popped out the original uh, element that was inside there, the little speaker, which I had laying somewhere around my workbench and it just happened to disappear. I believe I got a video earlier so maybe I can put that up into a corner or something. You guys can see our image. But uh, standard headphone jack, yes it's not shielded, but it's such a short cable and this will probably be used mainly out in nature is what I kind of plan on doing, taking some nature recordings like sounds of birds uh, when I go fishing and stuff, you know, just the, the sound of nature and, and really amplify that and give the sense through headphones that you're right there in the experience again when you kick back and just close your eyes and listen. Or maybe keep the eyes open if I take video footage too at the same time and it synchronizes. So, uh, I got a basic circuit going here for preamp, as you can see in the background. I went with a um, circuit, which, let me see here, uh, I believe this uh, came, the original circuit came from Texas Instruments, uh, the design, but I changed it. They call it non-verting microphone preamp circuit. I'll have to get the link here and... Uh, make a URL so you guys can click on it. Anyways, we've got an electric mic over here. It's being provided phantom voltage through a 10 km resistor. Obviously our 9 volt supply here, power switch, capacitance, which will uh, filter out any I don't know, potential noise on the battery. If anything, it'll give our battery more uh, resistance so the circuit can properly, I don't know, you get what I'm saying. Anyway, uh, so our uh, microphone is going through a 0.47 uh, UF capacitor, microfarad capacitor. Uh, the positive input is being balanced to half the voltage of the supply via 220K ohm resistor. And negative uh, feedback on the op amp is going to be via 50K ohm resistor, which this is a dual gang potentiometer to go down to the next stage because there's going to be two two of these stages of course one for left headphone one for or not headphone but microphone rather even though they look like headphones right nobody will ever know the difference uh, but it's going to be a dual gang potentiometer so you can control the input level if I keep doing that it seems to bother my camera uh, 
100 ohm via 50k ohm. I mean, you do the math, it's going to have a lot of gain. Uh, 10 microfarad capacitor there because there needs to be a little bit of roll off when it comes to low frequencies. I've noticed that these uh, particular microphones are very sensitive to wind. And yeah, I can put over, you know, some cloth or shielding to protect from wind and stuff. But uh, this this will roll off. I If I did the oscilloscope right, I believe around 40, 50 hertz, it'll start rolling off slightly. So we don't really need sound down to 20 hertz, do we? Not for something like this. It's not like we're going to be recording, uh, you know, the, the sounds of low frequency boat engines or something. Uh, anyways, uh, the major change I did uh, on the output 10 microfarad to a 470 ohm. You know, the diodes here. These diodes are used for clipping. This is going to keep the amplifier stage from reaching over roughly about a volt. 0.7 volts is, you know, the uh, forward voltage of a diode, but uh, uh, one in four one four eight. Uh, we're using these in tandem here to clip the uh, edges of the waveform if they reach over about a volt. But they're soft clipping, which is why we use a four hundred seventy ohm resistor, or the sixty eight ohm resistor, which kind of clamps down, but not so hard that it creates scare square scare waves. Yeah, square waves we want to make sure that it kind of rounds off the waveform a little bit so it doesn't go into clipping and sound harsh. This is absolutely necessary because, let's face it, when you're dealing with these things and you start banging them around, they're plugged into something, even doing that can create such a huge spike in the waveform that it goes from, you know, 0 to 60, like uh, what you're recording suddenly goes from very subtle to, you know, bang, and uh, your, your headphones explode, or, or you explode the input of uh, the recording device. So this will limit this to line level audio, regardless of what's coming through, it'll limit it to around a volt. So we'll never go over line level. It's more protection for, you know, what gets plugged into this, like a laptop or a uh, any kind of recorder device so this is what we're doing so far uh, for the circuit this is my mock-up circuit here this is the schematic underneath it this is what you're looking at this is the actual breadboard of circuit right now it's a little hairy but it shouldn't be too bad to build. I know it, it looks big, but by the time it's done, it'll probably actually be smaller than this board. Because we're using this. This one is built with discrete transistors, and there's a reason why I wanted to redesign the circuit because the original circuit didn't have any diode protection on the output, any kind of limiting, so it could easily blast the input of a recorder. Plus. Uh, Let's face it, nowadays, uh, operational amplifiers like the OP uh, 2134, I believe I'm using, they're a lot less noisy than discrete transistors in a lot of cases. I mean, it's really hard to beat them, so this will also consume a lot less power. This consumes like 0 .006 millivolts or something like that off a 9-volt load. So we can run this thing on a battery all day, and it's not going to even slightly drain it. It'd be like the equivalent of running a smoke detector. I have it currently hooked up and the microphone's plugged in. Microphones, I should say. And uh, we have the oscilloscope probes hooked up. We are running exactly 9 volts into the power. You can see the oscilloscope over there and it's picking up my voice. So I'll just pick up one headphone and talk into it really close. Now you can see there's a blue waveform right there. Audio, audio, yep. And yeah, I'll pick up the other one and you can see. Alright, uh, so yeah, so it's a working circuit. Um, this is 
right now I got the feedback set to 10 kilo ohms and this is still relatively sensitive uh, these peaks right here okay there's uh, 500 millivolts per division I don't know if you guys can see my division markers on there but uh, basically two volts division positive and negative so this is uh, hitting about one volt and you can see there's a slight clipping but you know this is like really sensitive right now and you have to realize uh, this would be like if the sensitivity was cranked up so I'm going to use a variable resistor dual gang potentiometer for the control and this this will go from 0 to about 50 k ohm and that will allow me to control the attenuation anywhere between you know where you have to scream into these microphones to like this where I'm talking from a distance right now and it's it's picking up loud and clear but and if you could just see when I said but 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 you know uh you can see the clipping like if I scream right into the microphone and you can see the absolute clipping on the waveform now I know that looks nasty it is but you know uh, that happens to be a feature of this because nobody would have the game this high unless you're actually trying to have something very sensitive so the whole point of this is uh, the diode protection is so that you don't blow out the input of something you're plugging into because line level should never really go above a volt should be about one volt at what 600 ohms or something like that and that's exactly what this is spec'd out to be in the actual circuit uh, the actual circuit itself I tested this with exactly a 600 ohm load on the output and it's still providing around a volt of output so it's working and uh, this is the circuit so far so the next stage is to actually whip this up on a perf board, kind of like the original circuit that I made way back in the day. I believe I I probably made this back in like 2003, 2004, back when I was a teenager. I mean, it was so long ago, and uh, it was hooked up to a dummy head. Like I said, um, the actual microphones themselves originally soldered to these little boards and they came out of an old tape recorder and I have another one for example that came out of a tape recorder this one has a little plastic uh, thing and a lot of dust where it, <laughs> it was actually exposed to the elements I suppose to the tiny little hole but that's what an electric mic looks like So you need to provide a phantom voltage, and by doing so, uh, they're very sensitive microphones. They're okay. Uh, they they work for recording. Like a lot of boom boxes back in the 1980s and 90s uh, had each one of these kind of mics. I mean, I believe this is what came out of on each side for the left and right speakers, so it could record in stereo. Like you go to parties and you don't want to play DJ or something for a day I believe some of them will let you record at the same time music was playing so you can get like a party going and people could dance around and could record the environment went through a lot of resistors to get the values I need I need to start organizing some of my parts I'm getting horrible at organizing my stuff I just use bins and it's not doing so well right now so, uh, until I get this soldered up, we're going to see how this works out, and eventually I'm going to take this out on the road, uh, hopefully maybe grab some kind of recording device, probably my laptop, because honestly I don't have a decent uh, digital video recorder with stereo input, and uh, do some uh, morning sound recording, maybe with the birds coming up in the morning, I think it would be kind of cool. And I'll make some YouTube videos out of that too. And 
I'm hoping to at least get some video footage and maybe like strap a cam to my forehead somehow without looking like a complete dork so that when I move my head around you know the audio will follow it so you can actually submerse yourself when you're listening through headphones because this will replicate the sound almost in like three dimensions and on top of it uh, the visual field will follow so thanks for watching for now